So you've bought a new motor and you're going to do blank, blinky uh, racing with it. This is a 17.5. And uh, you've got to find a sweet spot on this motor to give you maximum performance. Now there is a sweet, a sweet spot and you can find it, as I've found from experience, uh, with a 17.5. You need to be able to set the current to a certain amount when it's off load by adjusting the timing. Now when that's set properly, you'll be able to adjust the gearing on your car to get the optimum for the size of the track you're using and not keep messing around with the timing on the motor. Now it needs quite a bit of timing on here to get maximum performance. There's no point setting this at low timing and trying to go bigger on the gearing. And there's no point turning this up as high as it will go on the timing until the car just won't run anymore because that will run really, really hot and inefficient. And uh, so there is a way of setting this to the best uh, performance. So you've got maximum acceleration, maximum top speed, yet you're not going to overheat the motor or cause it to stall. So I'll show you using this uh, piece of equipment first. Uh, I've put it on there and measured the time and it's showing 31 degrees of standard. I've also got an ammeter in line uh, which shows you the amps drawn. And uh, I'm going to show you that by just setting, if you can get a cheap ammeter, one that reads up to 10 amps, uh, you can just set your timing with an ammeter. Now you do need a battery that has got a reasonable charge in it, not flat. Um, it doesn't have to be fully charged, so just some, somewhere around 8 volts or just over. And... Um, First of all, I've taken a reading on here, 31 degrees, and then I'll just show you on the KV an amp draw. Now at 31 degrees, this is only drawing uh, 1.8 amps. Uh, on, on there, you would have noticed it was showing about 1.7 as well. Um, so that's not high enough. Now, I've found from experience with a 17.5 turn, you need at least 4 amps and preferably 6 amps. And uh, if you can get it around 6 amps, you'll get maximum performance. Any more than 6 amps, it'll start overheating badly and could even cog. And also, you, you'll probably end up with the timing much too high and it will probably struggle off the line. So, too low. So, I'm going to adjust the timing and show you how I can get the current about uh, right and then we'll recheck it. I've reset the, uh, adjusted the timing on the end bell of this motor. Um, the team wave just have a little window in the end that goes uh, 0, 1, 2. Um, so you don't know how many degrees and it's all a bit of a guess. So I, but I've set it now. It's got, uh, this one's got two in the window and I'll just show you the timing. You do this test uh, offload. Uh, you can if you can uh, do this with the uh, motor in your car as long as you take the pinion off. You don't have to disconnect it from the speed control or anything. But if you're using this piece of equipment, you've got to obviously connect it up to the connections on the motor. Okay, we've got 51 degrees. Now, is that good enough? Well, I'll show you. We're going to do the KV now. Comes up to load. 6.1 amps, and if you notice on this scale here, it's saying about 5.8, which is close enough. So, 5.8 amps, 6 on here. Uh, this is doing uh, 20,000 RPM and uh, 2,765 kV. Now, that's about optimum for this motor, about 6 amps. Now, if it had been higher or lower, you'd adjust the timing to get 6 amps. Now, you haven't got one of these uh, little testers, but you can buy, or you may have an ammeter, or a multimeter, that does 10 amps on the scale. This one's got um, uh, 10 amps. Uh, it doesn't have to be expensive, any a cheap one. And then you connect it. I just use... Um, a spare charging lead so you would connect the 
into there and into the positive so the battery in the negative just goes to your your car like normal so this just goes in between your battery and your car speed control so um you won't you can leave it now set at that and it you can adjust your gear in and it will be maximum performance if you push the timing up higher that that will jump quickly you only have to turn it a few more degrees and that'll probably go up to 8 10 12 amps and it'll be run really hot and it won't give you any benefit uh, you can do the same with the 13.5 blinky as well. Uh, the current on there will be very much the same uh, because 13.5 is run more efficient than these anyway. So um, if you if you haven't got one of these, just use an ammeter and uh, you can adjust the time and spot on. Here's another one, uh, Thunder Power 17.5 turn. Uh, the end bell is graduated from 0 to uh, 50, but how to set it? Do you just turn it up to maximum and hope for the best? Well, uh, let's put it on here and see what readings we get. As it came, uh, it's set about 40 degrees on the end bell, it's only drawing 3 amps. Got good performance though, but we can get more out of it than that. 3 amps on the ammeter. So I'll adjust the M bell, see what we can get. I've adjusted the M bell, it only a bit, 45, it was on 40. Um, let's check, check the timing. Fifty four degrees seems to be a bit of a magic number, but it says forty five on the end bell. Let's measure the KV. Ooh, it sounds really good, doesn't it? Six and a half amps, so in six point three on there. That's really fast. 3,199 KV, 23,997 RPM, 6.5 amps. Uh, that looks like it'll be very, very quick. Uh, you might have to gear it accordingly, but it'll be running at the sweet spot once you get the gear in right. So you probably gear that with a slightly smaller pinion than some of the others. But, um, yeah, on the M bell, it just shows... It's got a little arrow there. It's just about on uh, 45. Thirty, forty, fifty. So um, again, sweet spot. About six amps, just over on this one. Should do it. Here's a uh, thirteen point five turn motor. I want to use it in Blinky. Again, the end bell does not have any um, timing on it and it's just uh, can rotate it so far uh, how to set it well, if you can set it to maximum and hope or if and then uh, do a, turn it back if it's too much or whatever but using the ammeter you can set this to the right timing now on here uh, got the timing I've adjusted the timing on the end bell Uh, 53 degrees it says and um, let's look at the power about 6.264 and uh, showing just over 6 amps on there so it's close enough so 3148kV 23000rpm it's over uh, 6.2 amps uh, that will give you a really nicely running 35 in blinky mode and you just have to gear it accordingly and not worry about messing around with the timing. 
So um, straightforward uh, meter, uh, that's all you need. Okay, this is how you connect the uh, ammeter up to your car. You buy an ammeter or one that does 10 amps uh, and you set it to the amp range. Uh, it normally comes with some probes which aren't much use so you can take them out. Uh, these 4mm sockets normally which is handy as that's normal connection size that we use on our cars. Uh, it's got a positive, common and 10 amps. So those are the two sockets you need. Now you then need a link wire. Well, this is a charging lead which connects to your ch charger and to your battery. So if you take it apart you can see you can get a, just a straight connecting wire. That's all you're going to need. Now on the car you um, obviously loosen the screws to move the motor away from the spur gear so you're not going to be turning the wheels. Now take your battery. Now this one's got 5 mil connectors. Some have 4. 4 would be easier but uh, with 5 I'm going to show, I'll probably need an adapter. So you can, you can connect up the positive or the negative, it doesn't really matter. So if I put the positive in, normally then the negative would plug into the battery there. But instead we're going to plug that, the negative into the ammeter. Unfortunately, this is um, a 5mm on mine, so I've made a little adapter. So that plugs into the ammeter so like that. And then you've just got to connect the other socket into your battery. So using this wire that I got from my charging lead, I plug it in there. And this is a 4mm one. I if I had a 4 to 5 I could have used it, so I've got another adapter there. So plug it into the battery. Now the car's come on and uh, it's running like that. It's drawing a small amount of current through the fan. If I disconnect the fan a minute. Shut the fan up. Uh, just drawing 0.17 of an amp at the moment, which is just running the electrics. So I'll turn my radio on and uh, I'll, I'll rev it up. Just drawing that 5.7 amp. Now, that uh, about 6 amps is uh, a good starting point. And you will get very good performance out of your car and it won't overheat the motor or anything. You can, once you get used to it, you can turn the amps up a bit, maybe 7, 8. Once you start getting to about 10 amps, you have to be very careful on the gearing and everything you'll start overheating the motor and losing some bottom end. But we will get top end, depending on what sort of motor you've got. But um, 6 amps is about the minimum you want for a good performance and it's a very good starting point at least you'll know that your car will perform pretty well once you've done it now if you haven't got a connecting lead or this comes with one you can use a crocodile clip from there to there uh, obviously crocodile clips can fall off but um, if you don't if it came with a lead with a crocodile clip on it uh, you could plug it in and just put the crocodile clip in there. But that's um, that's how you connect it up. Uh, you could plug it in the other way around. It does in in there uh, instead of that one. It just read minus instead of plus. And then you can adjust the timing on your M bell uh, to get the right figure that you want.